And welcome back to News On. A Stanford epidemiologist is calling out Dr. Anthony Fauci, saying the science, well, did not change, but Fauci did. He's been all over the place on masks. Uh, he, there's some emails you can find in the treasure trove of emails that have been released where he acknowledges that the, the virus is aerosolized. Well, the, the, the cloth masks that the people have been recommending, they're not very particularly effective against aerosolized vi you know, viruses. I, I don't really understand uh, his back and forth, and his answer made absolutely no sense. Yeah, you should change your mind when the science changes. But what is that science that changed that convinced him that masks are the most effective way? Uh, in fact, like the, remember the CDC director, uh, Robert Redfield, said that masks were more effective than, than vaccines. And Dr. <laughs> Fauci did not contradict him when, when Dr. Scott Atlas said that, that that was nonsense, which it was. I, I mean, I think, he's, it's just, it, I, I think his credibility is entirely shot. And joining us live now to discuss this issue and so much more is CEO and founder of the Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo, and former Obama campaign director Robin Biro. But first, uh, we want to go out to you, Melissa. Uh, what is your reaction? You uh, you probably didn't get a chance, but Dr. Tom Borelli, uh, one of our uh, correspondents, was on earlier, and he kind of echoed that same sentiment, saying that what Dr. Anthony Fauci was saying publicly in front of cameras and interviews and all was very different, vastly different, than what he was saying during these emails. And so I also asked him the question, though, did he not think that these emails couldn't possibly be made public? Your thoughts? Whether he thought the emails would be made public or not, I'm pretty sure that uh, Dr. Fauci is not going to be fired. I do not think that he's going to resign early. I do not think that he's going to be let go. And I think this is going to blow over. Uh, and again, sometimes there aren't any repercussions for things like that. And unfortunately, uh, some media outlets are really not covering these emails in depth like Robin, I want to go to you, something we've been talking about for quite a while, and we had a Democrat on last week who said, you know what, I think if you liked uh, Dr. Fauci, which a lot of Democrats seem to give him a lot of praise, uh, this isn't going to change your mind. If you're a Republican, and you probably weren't a fan of him anyway, and this just kind of solidified it for you. Do you agree with that assessment? I think it is somewhat of a Republican fever dream, if you will, that, that Dr. Fauci is going to get fired. I agree with Melissa. I just don't see that happening realistically. Uh, and look, I completely understand why he received criticism initially for changing his mind. But I've got to tell you, Miranda and Melissa both, uh, I respect doctors. I respect people in general who change their positions with evolving science. They, they right, he but, said but initially, Robin, science changed. But going back to the argument, though, is that the science didn't change. He did. He was saying something else completely different, public cameras are on, versus what he was saying in emails. Do you see that? That's not evolving I can see with that. the science. And that's a problem. I, I agree. That's a problem. It's just not going to change anything at all. He still remains the nation's leading epidemiologist. With all due respect to the Sanford epidemiologist, Dr. Fauci is number one. Uh, and he did get us through this. Uh, whether or not you agree with what he said and taking a, I, I, you know, it brings me back to remember when Hillary Clinton said that you'd sometimes take a private position and a public one. I hate that, but people do actually do that. I just try to not do that in my personal life. I don't respect it. I think the problem, yeah. I think ahead, the problem that was, there's a lack of trust now, and it may be partisan, it may not be partisan. I think there's a lack of trust now, because at the end of the day, if you look at some of those emails, the way that he was speaking to representatives in foreign countries, particularly in some of the doctors in China, you have to question who he was looking out for. He does work for us. He does work for the United States government. That's who pays his salary. And I feel like all along the way, he could have been more forthcoming as information did progress. Uh, instead of that, he was flip-flopping, changing his story. And quite frankly, it was scaring people. People are still scared here in New York to not wear a mask, even today, 18 months into this pandemic. So let me just ask you, uh, flat out, Robin, has his credibility been tarnished at all? And do you think that he should have to testify? As Melissa said, he works for us. Um, there has been some questions that have been raised about his connections to the Wuhan lab. Does he not owe that to the American people that are, frankly, 
paying for his salary, regardless of yes. where your political affiliation may be. Correct. And I always love to say in situations like this, where there's some ambiguity and there's questions that need to be answered, sunlight is the best disinfectant. So let's get some sunlight on this. Sure. Have him testify. Uh, have the, Let there be an investigation. Let's get some answers. Uh, because I myself, there there are credible, there's credible reporting that shows that, that something did happen at these laboratories. These doctors that were working in the laboratories were getting sick with something before we right. learned that the public was. So there's something there. We do need to learn the extent of it. And I'm glad that the Biden administration reopened a 90 day period. I just don't know if it's going to be enough to investigate. All right, I want to shift gears now. Uh, a migration study showing that big cities lost residents. We've talked about this a couple times, and this has actually cost some cities like New York uh, a house uh, and the representatives. Uh, this is happening during the first quarter of 2021. So the study basically shows that Americans uh, are moving from expensive, frankly, densely populated areas to warmer and more tax affordable states. I know I live in Florida. We've tried to tell people, we're closed. No, I, all, all jokes aside, but it has been an issue here. So, uh, you know, Melissa, why are so many Americans leaving these bigger cities? Do you agree with this study's assessment? Again, this is one study. Well, I'm living in New York. I've been here the entire time. I've never left. And I have to tell you, New York City is a different place now than it was in 2018, 2019, or even before the pandemic at the beginning of 2020. As much as I would love to say New York City is back, or it's coming back, it is It is not coming back. It is not coming back at a roaring pace. It is coming back at a snail's pace. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why New York City is being devastated and why people are left. It was starting to go downhill, to be honest with you, before COVID because of many of the changes in the crime laws. For example, there's a no bail policy in New York. If you're arrested in New York and, and they arrest you, you don't have to post bail. So there's no deterrent to continuing crime. Crime is a huge problem in New York and COVID again just escalated that. So people are leaving because of crime. People are leaving because of COVID. People are leaving because of higher taxes. They raise our taxes and they and they basically just snuck it in. Hardly any news agencies were covering it. If you didn't cover it or talk to your accountant, you may not have even known that your taxes are going to increase in the following year. New York City is having massive, massive problems in California too. And Chicago has high crime rates. So it's not just COVID. It is the crime yeah. rate in the cities that are going up and people that have families do not want to live like this. I went out on the street the other day. I went down to Times Square. You know, I really, I mean, I'm like clutch, clutching my purse walking by some of these uh, uh, people that are around that area because you don't know what could happen even in the middle of the day. And the but Melissa, you're the still there. But let me ask you this real quick. You're still there. I'll tell you why I'm still here, Miranda, because I love New York and I worked really hard to get here and I don't want to I don't want to leave and give up on New York City because of COVID. And that's why a lot of people are here, too. People that truly love New York City and know everything right. that it can offer are trying to hang in there. But if I had a family, if I had kids like Robin, I probably would have left. Yeah, I, we're running out of time on this topic. But Robin, I, I want to get your reaction to this. I mean, do you think, you know, she listed a number of reasons, your thoughts. We, we've all spent over a year indoors. Uh, and I, yeah, look, I used to live in a two bedroom, really trendy loft in Midtown Atlanta. And I'm so grateful that I sold that and moved to this big sprawling house in the suburbs, which cost the same amount of money. Uh, so I think people after spending all that time indoors realize, hey, we can move to the suburbs and spread out. Uh, and yes, the taxes are lower. So that's what we're seeing. Do you think we'll continue to see more and more people move out though robin let me ask you this because of, i do think because so. of higher taxes I, because of crime and are the democrats yes. in part to blame for that are the democrats to blame for that well i mean look the the metrop the metropolitan cities are pretty much democratic run i don't want to say that we're to blame but it takes a huge amount of taxes to support these large cities i get it I just don't want to pay them anymore. The taxes in, in Atlanta proper were insane. My taxes kept going up yeah. by about 37% a year. That's not sustainable. Oof. No, it is not. Um, but we are going to ask you to uh, stay right where you are because we still have a lot more to discuss. Still ahead on this edition of News On, former President Donald Trump butting heads once again with one of the most powerful tech CEOs in the country. Find out who that is. Next, also, what can we expect from the vice president today? We mentioned she's going to be in Guatemala. What do we need to hear and what do we hope to hear? We're going to discuss that with our panel next.